Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be walking you through my initial impressions in the assembly for the Kratos Quest Station. All right, so I know what you're thinking. Flywheel training, it's very niche. You're not necessarily wrong. However, I'm no stranger to flywheel training and I've always enjoyed having flywheel training options in my gym. In fact, years ago, I actually reviewed the Strexbox flywheel trainer and I actually did like it. Now, I no longer own that piece of equipment. I ended up selling it. But I wanted to specifically bring up what attracted me to this particular flywheel trainer. In my opinion, what attracts me to something like this is that other flywheel trainers will either load in the vertical plane or in the horizontal plane, but there are no options out there that effectively load in both planes. Now, when Kratos first came out a couple years ago, I was instantly attracted to it. It's exactly the kind of design that I like. It's got some nice wood pieces, some nice metal pieces. I personally really like that kind of stuff. Some things that I didn't like about Strexbox and like some of the other platform style vertically loaded flywheel trainers is that the actual platform is fairly small on a lot of those different options. What I don't like about that small platform is that you essentially have to stand on the platform completely in order to do the movement. And because it's so small, especially with things like Strexbox or certain K-Box, you're not actually able to get into like a good lunge position or if you want to do any sort of rotational work, there's really no way to, to work that in, at least not with a vertical base system. Now bear with me while I try to struggle fast through this explanation. What I love about the Kratos system is that the Kratos essentially takes the flywheel apparatus and it uses a redirect mechanism to actually load the athlete. Now this is the redirect platform that I'm talking about and what it's doing is you have two different options on the floor. So you can either load here or you can pull this pin up and you can load out here. And what you're doing is you are loading this, and this is simply providing the resistance. What's nice about that is you have plenty of options as far as where you can set this up. Plus the platform on the Kratos system being significantly larger than all of the other ones on the market enables you to do a whole lot more movements. Additionally, because of the weight of the floor, you can have things where maybe you only have one foot on the platform and you don't have to worry about the platform jumping around on you if you pull really hard. Now the other part that I like about it, which I mentioned earlier, is that it also has the ability to do horizontal loading and vertical loading using this redirect system in the same unit. All that you have to do to make that work is you take this bar and you mount it to your wall and then you can basically put this assembly here, you pop this pin out, and there's two little bars that lock in right here. And now you're locked in for any horizontal based movements. That right there makes this different than everything else on the market because it is a single flywheel unit. And what that actually does is a couple things. One, it makes it easier to use as a coach. No longer do you have to worry about uh, 0.25 plate being somewhere else uh, when you need it on a different inertia machine. Uh, it's basically just all there on the same machine. You just load one machine with what you need. You can have one set of plates instead of having to have two. Two, wear and tear. Now this is a machine, so it's gonna have to be treated like a machine, which means it's gonna need routine maintenance. So if you're able to eliminate half of the units, you're actually able to cut down on your costs and your time. Lastly, it actually ends up saving you some space because these do take up a little bit of space. Now, another thing I like about the Kratos Quest itself is that although it loads horizontally and vertically using these different apparatuses, it also has a very low profile, high quality floor so that it's not like on an elevated platform. The size of this thing is great and why I wanted this one in particular is because I really don't think it presents all that much of a space constraint. If I'm using my single column, which is right behind me, there's no reason that I couldn't stand on this while I perform face pulls on my single column uh, 
it's not exactly in the way. Now, when it comes to the actual setup of the unit, it does come in three different boxes if this is the version that you get. One box has the platform in it. Another box has all of the accessories, so like your redirect pulley, your actual main inertia uh, unit. And then a third box is going to have your vertical uh, upright that I mounted to the wall. It does come with a medium and an XL inertia disc. Now what's different about these than other ones on the market is that they don't have like the, the kilogram per meter squared force on it. Uh, but realistically speaking, that is something that you as a trainer or you as an athlete, you're going to understand how you perform on certain discs. So rather than having a 0.025 and a 0.05 and a 0.1, you're going to basically have small, I'm sorry, extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. And again, a medium and an extra large is what comes with the unit. Assembly is a breeze. Basically, you have the inertia unit and you're going to mount that using four included bolts that even comes with the allen wrench you need to mount it now the only thing that's going to take a little bit extra and you kind of have to have a little bit of diy skills is the vertical post now the vertical post the way that i did it is because i'm in a garage and i have that concrete lip that runs all the way around my garage i essentially just created a gap to where this mounts vertically and exactly up and down. Um, and I just used a four x four post that I had laying around because I do random projects, as well as a couple two x fours. Um, this is mounted in there using, in my opinion, it's probably got too many screws going into studs, uh, but you will need to understand how to use basic tools in order to get that vertical post aligned. Now, this isn't my full blown review, but I did wanna give you my initial impressions. And what I can tell you is that there is not a single thing on this that is anywhere near what I would deem as low quality. Although there are some 3D printed parts, the 3D print is obviously done using high quality, high strength materials. Trust me, I've seen my fair share of really crappy 3D prints and there's none of that going on here. All right, so I'm trying to tuck back in here so I can show you, but what's also really cool is that mine came with the Rep1 sensor installed. Now what's really unique and cool about this is that the Rep1 sensor can actually track the velocity, the general load, you tell it what discs are on there, and it does some of the math for you to let you know basically how much force that you're applying. The Rep1 unit is fully incorporated into the inertia unit. It has an on-off switch as well as a USB-C for charging, which is basically the standard. If you're shipping something out these days and it is any sort of tech and it doesn't have a USB-C, in my opinion, you're wrong. And there's so many people out there that are still shipping crap out that doesn't use a USB-C. So these guys, they definitely got it figured out. Flywheel training is something that's a little bit novel to the home gym community. There are a lot of people that know an absolute ton about the type of training modality, but in my opinion, there's not much out there showing the actual benefit. So after this first impressions video, what you're also going to get is some training videos where I'm going to show you how I change up my programming in order to get a lot of eccentric overload training back into my programming. But that's been it for this initial impression video. So overall, I'd say the high quality materials, the attention to detail, and even like, I'm trying to do the outro right now, but I just can't help but mention that even the surface of this wood platform is well cut using a CNC and a little minor detail that most people don't consider is that this thing is made using three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. If, if you don't know anything about plywood, what I'm gonna tell you is that when it comes to the best plywood that's out there, the cabinet grade stuff, it's never gonna bend, it's never gonna warp, it's got fully filled layers, like there's no gaps in between the plywood layers, this is it. And they're using it as a platform. But now, that's been it for this initial impressions video. I want to know what you guys think. Does flywheel training have something that's going to last for a long time in the home gym training world, or is this just a fad? Do you guys think that the Kratos is something that should be in more gyms? And how do you think it compares to other versions on the market? Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate each and every single one of you. Please hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next week. Remember, when it comes to your training in your garage gym, you should always keep it better, awesome, and of course, badass. I'll see you next week.